Hi, Tanya. Hello, How's it going? Hello. It's good. I've just woken up and there's a power cut. So, you know, classic Zim style. Woohoo! I know, right? And yes, for those that didn't know, that is why we couldn't have our interview last week because Zim style, Zim is cool like that. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much that you managed actually to make it through um today. So we'll definitely try and make it as short as possible and get to know who Tanya is and Tanya that's go. We're so excited. <laughs> thank you. Too. Yeah, me too. And thank you. I'm finally good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's been long coming. It's been long coming. So just yeah. um to those who do not know who Tanya is, I bet a whole lot of people know who Tanya is, but um just bring our listeners up to speed with your upbringing, a little bit about your background, who is Tanya, and all that fun stuff. Sure. Um, so I'm an actress, a writer, director, humanitarian. Um, I was born in London to a Zimbabwean mother and an English father. Uh, I then came back to Zim briefly in my childhood to go to school in Bloware. Um, and then I went back to the UK. And uh, I've been working in television and film for about 10 years now, which is crazy. Uh, I've been in projects like Kick-Ass 2, the superhero movie. Um, I'm in a Netflix what? show called Spotless. Um, I've been in Doctor Who, which is a big show over in the UK. Um, and then this past few years, I started writing. And at the beginning of the pandemic, I wrote like a, uh, a romantic comedy series on YouTube called Shoot Your Shot, which was a lot of fun. So, yeah, I'm just trying to stay creative in this crazy world. That's me. Right. And that is so amazing. That's a lot, though. That's a lot. So how do you keep up, really? Girl, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that, exhausted. Like, oh gosh, how do you keep up? But you're still looking fresh, darling. Or maybe it's waking up. I don't know. But we love it. We love it. You look it's good. Makeup. <laughs> it's makeup. Don't worry. <laughs> so actually, before I continue our interview, do you prefer being called uh, Tanya or your full name Tanya Radwa? I mean, both are fine, okay. <laughs> but I think right. I think right now people are ex really excited about my full name. So okay. uh, it's interesting for me getting used to actually being called Tanyarazo. Like it's like, oh, okay, oh, sounds I a lot more, a lot more formal. Like, oh yes, yes, you greet me properly. Yes. <laughs> No, <laughs> you know, I totally, I totally get it, especially if nobody has ever called you your full name in a long time or ever, <laughs> right? Because my name too is, is um, Debele, my second name is Notando, right? Mm. I had never been called Notando in my life. Yeah. Since I put it on social media, people chose to go with Notando. And at first, wow. like, you know, when people are calling you, you're not used to it. And they're like, Notando, I'm like, Oh, that's my name. <laughs> right, right. But now totally, that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> but you get used to it and it's fun. And it's quite fun because you end up saying, oh, actually, that is actually my name, you know, and it's yeah. beautiful like that too, anyway, right? But it's so yeah. cool and we're so excited as well, especially when I saw it on social media. I was like, Tanya, that's her. Yay! But then again, usually Tanya is short for Tanya, Tanya that's why I have a friend as well who's um she's white canadian and her name is tanya but the husband is zimbabwean and we always say ah no she's tanya Razwa, she's tanya <laughs> just, like, just like that right so that's quite fun so you said um your mom is the one that's zimbabwean is that it mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so is she in Devele, shana or how did you she get always says she's she's shana by birth but culturally in Devele. Right. So can you speak? So, yes. No, I honestly, this is like, I feel I've been constantly made to feel terrible. Uh, <laughs> but okay. Um, I, all I can say is, did it could Zidza Shona? Yes. Oh my gosh, that sounds good. That sounds Thank really, you. really good. And for those <laughs> actually tuning in, we're actually joined by Tanya Razgafia right here on Tough Love Giggles. And we're getting to know a little bit about her and even just um 
the way she's reclaiming her name. And we're just about to get into that. Um, and as she has already introduced herself, what she does, she's in the film and um, TV industry, a writer, director, producer, and an actress, you name it. And I think you're also a singer. I saw something like that somewhere, somehow. Yeah, yeah, I do sing, actually. I, I trained classically when I was at school, and then I really got into jazz. And then later on, I was briefly in a band, which was kind of electro, electronic trip-hop band, <laughs> um, which was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a very creative person in, in many different areas. Oh, that's, that's, that's amazing. And so let's talk about you know, reclaiming the name, how it all began. Yeah. So at first, when I got to, um, I got to know about you through your cousin, Rudo, when I went to the Cayman. And yeah. I, <laughs> I think she's listening right now. So, yeah. hey, girl. <laughs> yes, Rudo, thank you for tuning in. So that's how I started following you and, um, you know, on Instagram and stuff like that. And then there was one video that actually touched me a lot that I saw that you did about when the whole Black Lives Matter started. Um, was it Black Lives Matter or maybe the George Floyd shooting? And, you know, I just yeah, wanted yeah. you to just explain um, the, 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 just express your, your emotions at that moment because it was so heartbreaking, right? And then we get to hear now people reclaiming their names, being proud of who they are, you included in the forefront right there. And, you know, it was actually... Yeah so much fun to see people like you using your platforms, right? To embrace the black beauty that's out there. So my next mm-hmm. question to us um, that, um, that moment. Yeah, I think, you know, what's been going on over the last year with coronavirus and everything, there's been two parallel things going on. Mm-hmm. One is that we have been forced to not see each other, right? Um, but then at the same time, it's brought out this yearning for connection in all of us. Mm -hmm. And with that yearning for connection is the deep and profound desire to be seen. And, you know, so at the same time as the world is going through a collective grief and trauma, Mm -hmm. the world and by the world now I'm saying mostly Westerners then became aware of of an experience that so many other people were going through. Now I'm talking about black people's particular Mm -hmm. um, that they had somehow kind of not quite been fully conscious of. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, during that time where we were all forced to sit inside and reckon with ourselves, suddenly um, everyone in a, in a, in a very profound way to, the injustices that are going on in the world. So, you know, I think that it's no surprise that people resonated so deeply when firstly Tandy Wen Newton came out on the cover of Vogue and she was like, this is my full name. I want to be seen for who I am. And then me, when I said, oh, that's really inspiring. This is my full name. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want you to see me for who I really am. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I I think that was important. And a lot of people have messaged me saying, you know, I've been teased for my name. I've felt ashamed of my name, but now I feel better about coming forward. And, you know, I just think I, as someone who's as something of a small public figure, mm-hmm. uh, it's been important for me to use my voice to uplift people at this time. Not a small public figure, you're public media. <laughs> you are okay. Public yeah. figure. If you follow what's his name, I think... Um, Gil Jackson, do you follow Gil Jackson? No. He's, he's an actor as well, one prominent actor um, that I actually um, listen to a whole lot on Clubhouse. He's one person who says, never use the word try, never use the word if, and now we're talking about small, you are not small, my dear. <laughs> Oh, you're doing amazing and we love all your work that you're doing and you're changing like the youth as well they're getting to see they're getting inspired seeing your work seeing what you're doing you you have a lot going on in your plate but you can still uh, make time for other people especially on the philanthropy side of things which we're going to get into just shortly but never look at yourself as small my dear 
Thank you. Now, I think that throughout my career, something that's really frustrated me is not being as connected to the Zimbabwean creative community. And I couldn't quite figure out what the disconnect was. I mean, I know I'm mixed, mixed race. So I think sometimes people don't really ask, but I didn't have to re I didn't realize that I also had to be way more vocal if I wanted people to recognize that side of me, because otherwise it just gets swept under the rug. Absolutely. And that is, that's actually a good thing that you did. Now we know. And had it not been for it, I wouldn't have known. Right. And I was like, how is she a cousin? Like, <laughs> and then again, yeah. I figured I also have color, um, colored cousins who are mixed. And I was like, ah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm in the worst of world. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that is yeah. so, so amazing. So um, why is it important to you to be called Tanya Radzwa? Why is it important to you? It was important for me to educate people about names and their meaning and their power mm -hmm. and, and how that we cannot be separated, especially in African cultures. We cannot be separated from our families, from our histories, from our ancestors, because we carry their stories within our names a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so... It was important for me because it was, you know, it was a point of pride. It was me saying that here I am, this is my family's story. And, you know, I think especially my mom, she's been so touched by the outpouring of love that's come out of this, um, out of my name. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's been really exciting for the family, I think. Oh, wow, well, that's amazing. And for everybody else, we're excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about your philanthropy work. What yeah. do you do in um, your humanitarian work, philanthropy, giving back? What do you do really? Yeah. So um, my mom has always been someone who's encouraged giving back um, to the community in any sort of way. So I remember when I was about... 16 mm -hmm. um I was awarded a community champion award by the um I think it was the national lottery in the UK mm -hmm. and they gave me funding to start dance classes for uh, children of um uh, newly immigrated people to the UK who had maybe been at a loose end didn't have um afternoon activities couldn't maybe afford afternoon activities so that was my first dipping my toe into that world and then a few years later, um, we went to Mahali Primary School in Bloweo here. And, um, and I was really shocked because they put on this show for us, for me and my mom, because my mom was a guest speaker as a former um, pupil of that school. She went back to give a speech and I went to the bathroom and I turn on the tap and no water comes out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, and they said, oh, yeah, this is a dry school. And I was like, a dry school? What does that mean? Exactly. Like, How can they live without water? Yeah, and I was so, so shocked. So it became um, a bit of a mission of mine to raise some funds for them to dig a borehole. Wow. Um, so we did that. Um and then more recently, I've been working with um, some film students locally here uh, at Amakosi Studios. So in whatever way I can use my own personal skills and experience, uh, I'm always keen to do it. Uh, I think next up, we've got a project where I'm going to be heading out to a local school to um, donate sanitary towels, because as we know, a lot of the reason why girls, well, you may not know, but a lot of the reason why girls end up missing school in certain countries is because they don't have things like sanitary towels, you know, which we take for granted. But it's, it, um, you know, how can this be a barrier to education? That's just insane. So that's my next thing. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to do it. Nice. And I hear, I think Scotland is the one that started do, um, not selling sanitary um, towels in, yeah, in Scotland, right? They're no longer sold. Really? I didn't hear about this. Oh, yeah. So let's move to Scotland. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, free stuff. Who doesn't like freebies? Yeah, Scotland is now, they're no longer selling um, um, toiletries, pads, you name it. And I was like, that's a wow. good thing because not a lot of people can afford it, right? It even Yeah, if they're, they're expensive. Right? Yeah. yeah expensive right and that's a good thing that you're doing especially for young women especially those in the makayas too right they have no way to <laughs> raise money for that and like you're saying missing school I didn't know that right but it happens that's the reality and that's yeah. pretty cool yeah. that's pretty cool we truly appreciate that and so um any are there any other projects as well other than um, that you have coming through other than just for the young girl child um, uh, so my next things that I'm focusing on, uh, we are, my team and I are getting in touch with UN women. So I'm hoping to be involved in some way with the work that they're doing here. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I'm very open to the opportunities that are going on here, whether they be creative or on the humanitarian side. So, uh, I'll so keep you posted. Guys, do help if you can please do get in touch with tanya i hope um you're open to receiving dms of course <laughs> yes you can you can send them i might not reply depending on the subject matter right okay <laughs> talking about serious business giving back guys serious business no joke <laughs> serious business only <laughs> exactly and so in the film and um television industry world what made you be interested in that, just thinking, okay, this is my passion, or when did you discover that was your passion? Or, you know, just to go and run with it and say, this is what I'm gonna do. Like, what made you get into that? I was always that kid who was putting on shows for the family and getting my cousins in the room, like, you stand there, you stand there. Okay, <laughs> one, two, three, let's go. You know, like, <laughs> putting on shows, I was, very much inspired by the Spice Girls and um, that that female power moment. Yeah. Um, and so it was always something that I was interested in, but I didn't necessarily think that I could do it as a career. I mean, I don't know anyone in my family who's ever done anything like this or, you know. Um, but when I was 19, I ended up going to L.A. and... Um, doing acting classes there. And then I went back to the UK and got an agent. And I was pretty fortunate to start learning on the job. And I got quite lucky and uh, some auditions paid off and I got to work. And, and then it just kind of spiraled from there, you know. Um, to be honest, I, I still get a little bit like, is this for real? Like, I, you know, I, I, I still have my own struggles of like, am I really a, a worthy creative, you know? Like I have my own self-confidence things that I'm dealing with and, but you know, I have, I, I have to, doing it. yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So I have to remind myself that I'm doing it. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is actually inspiring. It is truly inspiring. And so um, I, I think my other question was, um what else did I want to uh, did I want to ask ah this was deep but okay it was actually um a lovely getting to know what it is that you're doing where you're going and actually yes the big the million dollar okay not a million dollar question but just the question that I was thinking so how was it during COVID because I know that the entertainment industry struggled in the like yeah. when the pandemic started because that's like a, a career that you closely relate to somebody, right? So how was yeah. that for you seeing that everybody was yearning to have connections with people, but then the industry on its own, it's food and the rent, bills, you name it. So how did you manage Honestly, it was really, really hard. And, and it still is a process of recovery for me in many different areas. Um, I, I felt the intense need to create during that time. And I was fortunate enough to um, have friends that, I, that wanted to be collaborators. So I, that, so I mentioned Shoot Your Shot, the, um, the series on YouTube that I created. That was my main outlet uh, during that period. But 
Yeah, I think the industry and the world is going to be in a recovery period for a while. So I'm back auditioning for projects and stuff like that. It hasn't gone back to um, what it was in terms of busyness Mm -hmm. fully yet. Um, But I am auditioning for roles and I'm kind of working on my own projects in Zim. So that's kind of how I got around it. I was like, where can I go? What can I do um, to still maintain my life and, um, and create? Right. And by the way, for those who never watched Shoot Your Shot, you need to go on YouTube and follow Tanya Fear and you'll see that. It was actually cute. And how do you do the anime and everything? How do you put it together? Like, I was like, okay, that's, that's cool. Like, yeah, um, animated, but then how you put everything together, though, because, well, there's real people in it. But how did you put it together? Because I know a lot of people in different, they were in different places, different areas. But I was like, yeah, everyone shot remotely on their phones, um, which people are like, what? How did you do that? I don't know. (laughs) Um, But I we basically did a lot of camera tests where I would call people on Zoom. I would watch them sometimes for an hour, just set up their camera. Like, okay, put it there, put it there. Okay, stop. Um, and we did it like that. And then with the, we used AR filters uh, for, there's a scene where I'm trying on wedding veils and we didn't have a wedding veil. Um, so a good friend of mine, who's a bit of a tech whip was like, why don't we hack Snapchat and use their filters within the film? And I was like, how do you do that? um so she yeah so she hacked snapchat to to work on zoom at the time they weren't I don't think they were completely compatible I don't know and we shot with like filters and stuff like that so it was it was pretty innovative it was a way of um kind of saying you know we might be stuck at home but we can still be creative we can still we can still use the technology that we have to push forward you know Right. No, that was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. I was like, okay, I thank see. You. <laughs> but thank you so much for your time, Tanya, and just getting to know your work, um, your uh, your philanthropy work as well, other than just your career. And so for those who would like to follow you, you mind sharing your social handles, um, follow, like, subscribe. Yes, that. follow me at Tanya Fear, T-A-N-Y-A-F-E-A-R. I'd love to see you there. Join my journey. Um, We've been posting really cool stuff. We just did a photo shoot with GQ and Glamour in South Africa. Um, So there's a lot of cool content at the moment. So please come along and join. Yay, we're super excited about that. And also on a lighter note, this is controversial a little bit. Not really, but who's your celebrity crush? (laughs) Celebrities, hello. (laughs) <laughs> Hi celebrities. I'm looking for love. No. Uh honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know. Who can I say? Who can I say? No, I, I'm not gonna say because we might end up dating and then I'll be so embarrassed. That won't be embarrassing. We'll be like, guys, this was true prophecy on After Five Radio. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but no, that is so cool. It doesn't matter. That's really funny. I just thought I should just, you know, lighten up the tone. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's, who's your celebrity crush? Who are my celebrity crushes? I use. <laughs> I have so many. <laughs> but yeah, ish, I don't know. It depends. It depends. One day it's Columbus Short. The next minute it's um. I know, right? Ryan Reynolds depends. We're what we're okay. Okay. So it depends. It depends. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so many celebrity crushes, right? But thank yeah. you so much, Tanya. It was such a pleasure and an honor having you thank through you. on After Five Radio and just getting to know who you are, um, where we can follow you, your work, everything that you do um, at the moment. Yeah. I look forward to more. I will be following an IG. <laughs> That's my space. <laughs> Yes, yes. Awesome. Thank you it so much. It was great so to finally great. meet you. Uh, thank you. It was great meeting you too. So Ed, one last thing, any um, word of encouragement to anybody who wants to get into the industry, like say maybe acting or just to chase their dreams, what is it that they need to do or how best can we encourage them? 
I'll just say, you know, the thing that will get you far is knowing who you are and knowing what makes you unique. Don't let this industry in particular define you because it can be a really cruel industry. And the way to survive it is to collaborate with people that see you for your talent, see mm -hmm. you for your truth, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, surround yourself with community and just keep going because the, the more you put yourself out there, it inevitably attracts people to you and the right people will come to you. Absolutely. So have faith and keep it moving. You heard it for yourselves, guys, from the talented Miss Tanya Fear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great night.